and welcome to week three of A Year of Wisdom. Day 15, Job 16, 17, and 18. Then Job responded, I've heard many things like these. Miserable comforters are you all. Is there no end to windy words? Or what provokes you that you answer? I too could speak like you. If only I were in your place, I could compose words against you and shake my head at you. Or I could strengthen you with my mouth and the condolence of my lips could lessen your pain. If I speak, my pain is not lessened. And if I refrain, what pain leaves me? But now, he has exhausted me. You have laid waste all my group of loved ones, and you have shriveled me up. It has become a witness, and my infirmity rises up against me. It testifies to my face. His anger has torn me and hunted me down. He's gnashed at me with his teeth. My enemy glares at me. They've gaped at me with their mouths. They have slapped me on the cheek with contempt. They have masked themselves against me. God hands me over to criminals and tosses me into the hands of the wicked. I was at ease, but he shattered me. And he has grasped me by my neck and shaken me to pieces. He has also set me up as his target. His arrows surround me. He splits my kidneys open without mercy. He pours out my bile on the ground. He breaks through me with breach after breach. He runs at me like a warrior. I have sewed sackcloth over my skin and thrust my horn in the dust. My face is flushed from weeping and deep darkness is on my eyelids. Although there is no violence in my hands and my prayer is pure, earth Do not cover my blood, and may there be no resting for my cry. Even now, behold, my witness is in heaven, and my advocate is on high. My friends are my scoffers, my eye weeps to God. That one might plead for a man with God, as a son of man with his neighbor. For when a few years are past, I shall go the way of no return. My spirit is broken. My days are extinguished. The grave is ready for me. Mockers are certainly with me, and my eye gazes on their provocation. Make a pledge for me with yourself. Who is there that will be my guarantor? For you have kept their hearts away from understanding. Therefore, you will not exalt them. He who informs against friends for a share of the spoils, the eyes of his children also will perish. But he has made me a proverb among the people, and I am one at whom people spit. My eye has become inexpressive because of grief, and all my body parts are like a shadow. The upright will be appalled at this, and the innocent will stir himself up against the godless. Nevertheless, the righteous will hold to his way, and the one who has clean hands will grow stronger and stronger. But come again, all of you now, for I do not find a wise man among you. My days are past. My plans are torn apart. The wishes of my heart. They make night into day, saying, The light is near in the presence of darkness. If I hope for Sheol as my home, I make my bed in the darkness. If I call to the grave, you are my father. To the maggot, my mother and my sister. Where then is my hope, and who looks at my hope? Will it go down with me to Sheol? Shall we together go down into the dust? Then Bildad the Shuhite responded, How long will you hunt for words? Show understanding, and then we can talk. Why are we regarded as animals, as stupid in your eyes? You who tear yourself in your anger, should the earth be abandoned for your sake? Or the rock moved from its place? Indeed, the light of the wicked goes out, and the spark from his fire does not shine. The light in his tent is darkened, and his lamp goes out above him. His vigorous stride is shortened, and his own plan brings him down. 
for he is thrown into the net by his own feet, and he steps on the webbing. A snare seizes him by the heel, and a trap snaps shut on him. A noose for him is hidden in the ground, and a trap for him on the pathway. All around, sudden terrors frighten him and harass him at every step. His strength is famished, and disaster is ready at his side. It devours parts of his skin. The firstborn of death devours his limbs. He is torn from the security of his tent, and they march him before the king of terrors. Nothing of his dwells in his tent. Brimstone is scattered on his home. His roots are dried below, and his branch withers above. The memory of him perishes from the earth, and he has no name abroad. He is driven from light into darkness and chased from the inhabited world. He has no offspring or descendants among his people, nor any survivor where he resided. Those in the west are appalled at his fate. Those in the east are seized with horror. Certainly, these are the dwellings of the wicked, and this is the place of him who does not know God. Proverbs 15 A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise makes knowledge pleasant, but the mouth of fools spouts foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, watching the evil and the good. A soothing tongue is a tree of life, but perversion in it crushes the spirit. A fool rejects his father's discipline, but he who complies with rebuke is sensible. Great wealth is in the house of the righteous, but trouble is in the income of the wicked. The lips of the wise spread knowledge, but the hearts of fools are not so. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but he loves the one who pursues righteousness. There is severe punishment for one who abandons the way. One who hates a rebuke will die. Sheol and Abaddon lie open before the Lord. How much more the hearts of mankind. A scoffer does not love one who rebukes him. He will not go to the wise. A joyful heart makes a cheerful face, but when the heart is sad, the spirit is broken. The mind of the intelligent seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. All the days of the needy are bad, but a cheerful heart has a continual feast. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and turmoil with the treasure. Better is a portion of vegetables where there is love than a fattened ox served with hatred. A hot-tempered person stirs up strife, but the slow to anger calms a dispute. The way of the lazy one is like a hedge of thorns, but the path of the upright is a highway. A wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish man despises his mother. Foolishness is joy to the one who lacks sense, but a person of understanding walks straight. Without consultation, plans are frustrated, but with many counselors, they succeed. A person has joy in an apt answer, and how delightful is a timely word. The path of life leads upward for the wise, so that he may keep away from Sheol below. The Lord will tear down the house of the proud, but he will set the boundary of the widow. Evil plans are an abomination to the Lord, but pleasant words are pure. He who profits illicitly troubles his own house, but he who hates bribes will live. The heart of the righteous ponders how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. Bright eyes gladden the heart. Good news refreshes the bones. One whose ear listens to a life-giving rebuke will stay among the wise. One who neglects discipline rejects himself. But one who listens to a rebuke acquires understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction for wisdom, and before honor comes humility. 
come back to this channel each day for the reading of Job, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes. And once again, thank you for being here. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the bell. And don't forget to like it as well. And I'll see you tomorrow for another reading. Blessings. Standing at the crossroads, I'm lost without a clue. I need a big pink neon sign to show me what to do. I thank you, Lord. It glorifies you when you're the only answer. I praise you, Lord. Holding what's too much for me And I'm amazed by you, Lord Because nothing's too big and nothing's too small to lay at your feet I want to thank you, Lord, for believing in me